Hi, my name is Beth Heidorn. I'm the executive director here with the Racine Zoo. I have worked at zoos across the country, and what makes them so special are the zookeepers and animal care staff that make up the people that are taking care of the animals. We are very fortunate here at the Racine Zoo to have amazing zookeepers. They take care of all of our animals, whether it is a rhino, a snake, a bird, or a penguin. What's really interesting is that they're specialized. So when you think about, well, I can be a zookeeper, um, anywhere you can, but you specialize. So those that are taking care of rhinos have a different kind of technique than they are of those that are gonna be taking, say, care of a kangaroo. And you're gonna be learning about those different uh, specialized zookeepers today because we wanna make sure that our animals are taken care of by the best of the best as they are here at the Racine Zoo. So each one of the areas that um, uh, our zookeepers focus on are specialized. And those keepers are, have learned those techniques and are able to take care of our animals the best they can be. That's what makes our zoo special and our zookeepers are amazing. You're gonna learn that today. Our zoo is divided up into seven areas, strings or routines like we like to call them. Each routine has different animals on it and generally has one keeper on that routine each day. The, zoo, the way the zoo is divided is one routine has all of our primates. We have a carnivore routine, our ambassador animal routine, we have two large hoofstock routines, and then we have a routine that we kind of call the bird routine, mixed species routine. Uh, we also have a commissary routine. So what happens on each of those routines is the keepers come in in the morning, check on all of their animals. The daily routine is pretty similar, even though the animals are a lot different on those routines. The keepers come in, check on those animals, they make sure that they clean their outdoor exhibits, feed them any of their AM diets, and then also make sure that they have anything else they might need before shifting them out to their outdoor exhibits. A lot of our animals shift into an indoor space overnight, so after we get all of our animals set and on exhibit for the day, we take the time to clean those exhibits and make sure that all their indoor spaces are ready for when they come off exhibit. Our keepers are also making sure that we're providing all of our animals with enrichment, as well as pre preparing any other diets that we might have to make later in the day. Enrichment can be anything from novel food items, different spices or scents, it, and novel toys that they maybe haven't seen before to keep them physically and mentally stimulated. We also have a commissary keeper who prepares most of our diets for almost all of the animals here at the zoo for us for, so that we can use them the following day so they're ready to go for us in the morning. On this episode, we're gonna highlight our bird and mixed species exhibit. So it kind of has a hodgepodge of animals. It's got our kangaroos and walroos, tawny frogmouth, our emu, as well as our West Caucasian tur, and some other of the and some of the other birds and other hoofstock that we have here at the zoo. I'm one of their primary keepers, and I hope that you enjoy these animals as much as I do. Out here on our mountain, we have two West Caucasian tur. May, who is our female who's eating right now, and then Tavik, our male. May is 17 and Tavik is 14. These guys came together from the San Diego Zoo in 2005 and have been here since. Uh, in the wild, these guys get up to about 10 to 12, but in human care, they can live to be 19. Both of these guys are well exceeding what they would expect in the wild, and that's largely due to the excellent vet care that they receive. A few years ago, Tavik no we noticed that Tavik was having trouble getting up and down the mountain. So keepers put him on a joint supplement to help make it smoother for him to get on and off. And we're hoping that for many years to come, he'll be able to still get up and down the mountain. Uh, so these guys live together here. Uh, in the wild, they do usually exist in same sex groups, but these guys have been together for almost 15 years and have no problems. 
Uh, both males and females do have horns. So the male's horns are definitely bigger and a lot heavier. They can weigh almost two kilograms. Uh, our females, you can see that she chipped hers uh, a few years ago. Because their horns, they don't shed and regrow. So they're gonna stay like that. So hers is chipped, but she gets around just fine with it. Uh, these guys are endemic to a mountain range in Northern Russia. Uh, so they're used to extreme cold. So they are one of the animals here at the zoo that can stay out year round. Uh, they combat having to be in hot and cold by growing a winter coat. So they're sporting their summer coats right now, but in a few months, they will get their winter coats and they'll get a lot fluffier. Uh, and then that protects them from the winter. They also are very short and their legs are also short, but also very like strong and buff. This helps them get up and down the mountain. They, can, they have no problem getting up and down when there is snow or ice either. And that's because the short legs help make their center of gravity a lot lower. Uh, so they just have a better chance of getting up and down. Uh, there's only about 2,500 of these guys left in the wild, uh, so they aren't doing super great. So the Racine Zoo is one of, one of a handful of zoos in the States that does have these animals in human care. Here at the zoo, they get fed uh, a grain that's made just for herbivores. So you can see that's what May's eating. Um, and then they also get hay and alfalfa every day. They do get browse occasionally, but their favorite things are leaf eater biscuits, which is a cracker-like biscuit that we feed to a lot of the animals here at the zoo. Um, and then they love celery salt, which is good for us because if they ever have to get meds, we can just crush it up and put the meds in the celery salt and they eat it no problem. Most of the time you'll see Tavik kind of hanging up at the top of the mountain. He likes to just sit up there and kind of watch what's happening. May is a lot more curious. She kind of follows keepers around, likes to see what we're doing. Um, and she will get scratches from us occasionally. So come out and see these guys next time you're here. Hi, Jason here at the Racine Zoo right outside of Meerkat Manor, our lovely meerkat exhibit. And we're here to talk about our meerkats. We've got Arrow, Hydro, Blaze, and Jack. They are our brothers and they're about 11 years old. Uh, meerkats are a very social little group of mammals. They're related to the mongoose family. They like to eat all sorts of insects and invertebrates, as well as some vertebrates and even some plants. They can be found in various desert and grassland regions of Southern Africa, and they can live in groups or mobs of up to three families that can include up to 30 individuals. Here at the zoo, we've got the four brothers, and you can often find one of them standing sentinel duty. Um, that's a natural behavior that you'll see out in the wild a lot is that one of the meerkats will actually be standing guard over the others as they're foraging for food. That way someone can let them know if there's a predator or threat in the area. And here at the Racine Zoo, you can often see someone standing at the top of the termite mound, keeping a guard on things. So make sure you swing by and see if you can figure out who's on sentinel duty that day. Hi, my name's Leo. Uh, I've been going to zoo camp for about seven to eight years now. And the reason I like doing junior zoo camp is because it just gets us like the feeling of being a zookeeper and it's just a lot of fun because we get to help out and feed the animals and it's just a lot of fun. Being a zoo in Wisconsin means that farming is a part of our culture. That's one of the biggest reasons that we built the Barnyard Safari, the exhibit that's behind me. It's so important, especially being the dairy state, that kids coming to the zoo learn a little bit more about where their food comes from and what these animals look like. A lot of people who come to the Racine Zoo, given our community, have read about goats and sheep in books, but sometimes they've never actually met one in person. This exhibit really gives folks a really great chance to get up close and personal with a lot of our animals like sheep, goats, llamas, alpacas, and pigs. And it's also a really great opportunity for guests to be able to brush and connect with these animals on a very personal level. 
So let's head inside our barnyard safari and meet Gage, one of our keepers, and some of the fantastic animals that are in this section of the zoo. Hi, I'm Gage here at the Racine Zoo. Been a keeper here for about four years now, with about two years on the farm here. Um, we have our miniature pigs, three of these guys. We have Orson here. We also have Norton and Elmer in the back. Um, this guy is probably my favorite. He's the sweetest of them all. He'll come up and snuggle right next to you when the, the colder temperatures start coming. Um, but these guys are fully grown. This is all they're going to get. They only get about this big. Some people think that those little miniature pigs only stay this big, but they do get a little bit bigger. So these guys daily care, we do have a couple things for them around. They love digging around. So we will hide things in the ground here. We'll take some of their carrots that I'm feeding Norton here and dig them up under the ground. We have a mud wallow and these guys, they just do it around and have a good time out here. So these guys are very, very intelligent. They are one of the smartest farm animals that we have down here at the Racine Zoo. They use these sniffers here to sniff around and find as much food as they can underneath the ground, eating little roots and carrots like I'm feeding Elmer here. Um, these guys also do get enrichment like every other animal at the zoo. One of their favorites is actually a ball pit. So we'll fill up their tub full of different colored balls and throw a bunch of food down in there and they'll run around and sniff out all these little pieces of food. Um, the kids also love to see that. They, it really gets them to connect with the animals and see how smart these guys really are. Over here we have our Nigerian dwarf goats. Um, these are three of our boys up here. As you can see, they're kind of on our totem pole of steps. So we have Chance up here. He's usually the boss in town. Um, we also have Ditto and Dooley. Um, the girls are back around over there with a bunch of our other sheep. We have Tunis sheep from Africa and Black Belly Barbados sheep um, from Barbados. So these guys, they kind of lounge around all day, um, but this is a good time for our guests to come and interact with them. So we do have a bunch of brushes that you can pick up and come and brush our goats here. It's really fun for the friends and the family to come out and just interact with an animal versus seeing it from a distance. Um, so caring for these guys does involve a lot like a lot of the other animals here. So we come in, give them some food. They're gonna destroy this goat yard overnight. So we're gonna have to clean all that up, give them some hay throughout the day. Um, we do give them a lot of enrichment as well. So a lot of the times we fill coffee filters with holes in them um, with some of their food and they'll come around in a big mob, roll them around and get as much as they can out. So Ditto here is actually my favorite goat. Um, we really get along well. My first day down here at the farm, he came right up behind me and just stuck his head right in between my legs and just stayed there and let me pet him for about a half an hour. So we really bonded over that. And this guy is one of those ones that's just outgoing, just like myself, and will come around, go right up to all the guests and let them uh, pet him too. That being said, he will chew on your clothes, so you gotta be watching out for that as well. Over here, we have our llama and alpaca down here at the Barnyard Safari. So these guys are really, really cool. I would say they're the coolest farm animals we have over here. Um, they are part of the camelid family, meaning they're related to camels. So 
They uh, have the ability to spit, just like a camel does, um, the four long, tall legs. And these guys hail from South America. So they are prized for their fur, um, alpaca wool and uh, llama wool. But there's a couple differences between them. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see. So we have Chief and Gazer. Now Chief is this darker one up here. Gazer's the white one in the back. Um, Chief is gonna be our llama. So you can tell because he has banana curved ears as opposed to a straight ear by an alpaca. Um, another difference is llamas are much larger. They can weigh up to 400 pounds where a uh, alpaca is roughly about half that. So these guys are very skittish, as you can see, they're kind of hanging out back behind me here. Um, unless I have some food, they're probably not gonna come too close. These guys, we, they do have a lot of the same daily care as the other animals down here at the farm. So we'll come in in the morning, clean everything up, start giving them hay because they do eat a lot. Uh, we go through about a bale of hay every couple days for these guys. They do get some grain as well. A lot of flax seed, um, some beet pulp, and things like that. Some natural, good, hearty food for these guys. Um, as you can see, when they're chewing, they're gonna keep chewing and chewing and chewing. It's called a cud. So they chew up their food, swallow it, mixes with their stomach, comes back up, they keep chewing it again, bring it back down. That's what you call ruminant. So, um, that's one of the things that identifies these animals from a lot of other ones at the zoo here. Um, llamas are also very well known for their uh, ability to protect other farm animals. Here they don't really serve that purpose, but farmers will have a llama in their flock just to be able to protect the animals from coyotes and other predators that are going to come and try and prey on their farm. favorite exhibits here at the zoo, Walkabout Creek. This exhibit is unique in that our guests are able to actually walk through the exhibit on a path and be in the same exhibit as to where our animals live. It's one of the largest exhibits and it's home to all of our kangaroos, wallaroos, our frogmouth, and our emu. One of the most common questions we get asked is if the animals can go on the path, and they most certainly can. The reason why this exhibit works the way it does is that it's big enough that the animals have space to go where they aren't near the guests when the guests are walking through, but then overnight when the zoo is closed, they certainly can use the whole entire exhibit. When we designed this exhibit, we had to make sure that there was gonna be enough space so that all the animals could still feel comfortable while still allowing those guests to walk through the exhibit. We hope that next time you're at the Racine Zoo, you stop by our walkabout exhibit and say hi to all of our animals that call this exhibit home. Macropods are marsupials that are native to Australia. Macropod just means large foot, and they really do have large feet. And a marsupial is an animal that has a pouch, and they carry their young in that pouch for the first portion of their lives. Here in our Walkabout Creek exhibit, we have three species of macropods. We have our red kangaroos, our gray kangaroos, and our wallaroos. We have a total of three red kangaroos. Those guys are the largest macropod species, and they have a little bit more of a red tinge to their coat. Our three girls are Adele, Blair, and Annie, and they're all about five years old. They are often seen in the exhibit, hiding out underneath some of the shady spots in the warmer parts of the day. 
We also have four gray kangaroos in this exhibit, and the gray kangaroos are actually the second largest macropod. Our red kangaroos and our gray kangaroos are all a little on the younger side, so they're not quite full grown yet, so they all will get just a little bit bigger than they actually are. Our gray kangaroos are right behind me, and they are a little bit darker in color. We have Josie, Julia, and Noelle, our three girls, and then we also have one male who was actually born here at the zoo. His name is Joey, and he's about two years old. We also have three wallaroos in this exhibit. Our wallaroos are a little bit smaller and also grayer in color, except for our male wallaroo, who is bigger than the girls and a lot darker in color as well. Our girls are both about eight years old. All the macropods that live in this exhibit can live to be about 10 to 15 years old in the wild, but under human care can live up to be 20 years old. Our macropods eat a grain that's specifically made for kangaroos and wallaroos. They also get produce every day as well as hay, and then they also get to graze on all of this grass out here as well as browse on any of the trees and the other stuff in the exhibit. These guys do live down here year round, so again they have the choice to go inside or outside if they would like, but they do have warm, heated indoor holding that they get to go to in the winter, and most of them do make the right choices and go inside when it's super cold. Our red kangaroos, we do move to an indoor holding because they don't tend to do as well out here in the winter, so we want to make sure that everyone's comfy and cozy in the winter, so they move to a nice heated barn where they don't have to worry about anything for the winter. Macropods are also crepuscular, which means that they're most active at dawn and dusk. And we definitely do see that in our walkabout exhibit. In the mornings when we come in to check on everyone and at night when we're closing up, they definitely are more active. They're out exploring the exhibit. And then during the warmer parts of the day, they're lounging in the shade and just relaxing when it's that warm. talk about our Joey kangaroo who was born here about two years ago. So what's interesting about macropods is that when their offspring are born they're only about the size of a jelly bean and they actually crawl on their mother's abdomen, abdomen up to the pouch and then they spend about the first nine to ten months inside their mother's pouch until they're ready to come out. So our Joey was, came out when he was about seven months old. They kind of make infrequent trips outside of the pouch. And then he's been fully out now for about a year. So he now is about the same size as the other gray kangaroos that we have. And he actually is going to go to a new home this year. Like many babies born in AZA zoos, they generally don't stay at the zoo that they were born at their whole lives. So the AZA has SSPs that actually pay attention to the genetics and make sure that all the genes are appropriate for the species. And if it's the right decision for our babies to go somewhere else, then that's what we do. So our Joey is actually gonna leave us this year and go to another zoo. So whenever an animal is scheduled to go to another zoo, they have to go through an exam to make sure that they're healthy and ready to go and that there's not any problems that might arise during shipment. And then we also make sure to practice getting them comfortable in a crate. So for us, that means we put a crate out in the yard. We provide food in the crate for them and make sure that we can get them comfortable going into the crate themselves since that's how they'll travel to their next zoo. Most animals in AZA zoos have an SSP, which is actually a species survival plan. And what this means is that there are people within AZA that are monitoring the genetics of the species within zoos to make sure that if animals were ever to be able to be reintroduced back into the wild, we've created a genetically diverse and stable population within zoos. So we are so happy that our Joey is able to contribute to the gray kangaroo conservation and population within zoos. What happens is there's a stud book keeper that they keep track of all the genes and make sure that any births and hatches that happen, that they end up going to zoos that where their genetics will be valuable to that place. We're so excited that our Joey can be part of preserving this species for the future.
is 25 years old and has lived at the zoo since 2002. Emu in the wild can live to be 10 to 15 years old, but under human care can live up to be 30 years old. Sydney is actually blind in her left eye, but she gets around her exhibit just fine. Emu are also rat heights, which just means that they have a smooth sternum because they don't have those flight muscles that need to attach to them. Emu are also native to Australia, and the only other bird larger than them is the ostrich that is native to Africa. And emu's feathers are actually a little bit different than most other birds' feathers in that they actually split instead of just being one single feather. And what this allows them to do is thermoregulate a little bit more than other birds, keep their body heat a little bit more constant despite the temperature around them. Emu can also reach 30 miles an hour when they're running, so that's pretty fast. Sydney, our emu, enjoys taking showers in the summer like you guys have seen. And in the winter, she does stay down here in the exhibit all year. In the winter, she likes to hang out inside with her Wallaroo friends. Make sure to stop by and see Sydney next time you're in Walkabout. Walkabout Creek, the farm, and our tours. What amazing animals, and I bet now you can appreciate the wonderful zookeepers that we have working those areas, and the specialization that it takes to make sure that all of our animals are taken care of with the highest quality. I love the episode that you've been seeing today, and I sure hope that you come out to the Racine Zoo we're located just north of downtown Racine at 2131 North Main Street. When you come out here, you're going to be able to go to the farm, check out our Walkabout Creek, and of course our Turs. All very, very special areas and very, very special animals. We certainly hope to see you soon at the Racine Zoo and of course our next episode of Racine Zoo to You.